We got new microphones in our select board chamber last week, and I should have known better than to lean in and scream, so I apologize. Uh, my name is Steve Bartha. Welcome to Balmy Danvers. I'm the town manager here. Um, it's our pleasure uh, to have you all here today um, for this important event. Uh, housing, and especially housing that is affordable to residents in our communities, um, has become a difficult and challenging issue that will is in many ways defining the Commonwealth today. Uh, we in Danvers as a community have taken decisive action in the last few years uh, to begin to work on this critical need. And I want to acknowledge we have a number of our local officials here today from our planning board, select board, and staff who have been in the trenches working on these issues. Uh, in 2017, our town meeting adopted a smart growth zoning district in the heart of our downtown, uh, which resulted in the Maple Square project that is currently under construction in, in Danvers Square uh, that will result in 145 walkable housing units, 20% of which will be affordable um, and will include uh, mixed-use commercial on the first floor and new restaurants. In 2020, our town meeting uh, overwhelmingly voted to rezone uh, the, other, uh, the rest of the 90 acres that comprise our downtown. Um, introducing uh, by right multifamily housing um, and uh, other types of mixed use developments. Um, I told the secretary I was gonna take, uh, make a joke at Lexington's expense and decided not to, but now I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, <laughs> they're taking a lot of credit these days for being the first community uh, to comply with the MBTA law. However, the zoning that we passed in 2020 required only minimal adjustments to the uh, minimum densities in a couple of very distinct parcels. So I think 99% compliant qualifies as compliant, <laughs> um, but we'll let them have their day in the sun. Um, and the last thing I would say, Dan through those two zoning processes, Danvers has established um, what really is one of the most robust affordable housing provisions um, that, we, that we're aware of. Uh, for most new developments, 12.5% of housing has to be either deeded restricted affordable um, or fractional payments uh, equal to $35,000 per unit produced has to go into our affordable housing trust funds, which can then be used to leverage additional affordable housing units in our town. I think in many ways, Danvers is a good case study of the uphill battle uh, that we all are fighting to create affordable housing. Um, and I think we've done more than most communities to stimulate housing development that meets the need of our residents and our would-be residents. But whether these efforts are enough to make sure that housing security is something that all members of our community can enjoy uh, I think remains an open and vexing question. And on that front, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, the governor of Massachusetts, who has made, oh, I know what you are, you want to get me out of here, let me give one more thing. Um, the governor has made housing affordability um, a top priority in her administration, and I know that I can speak on behalf of, of my fellow managers when I say that um, in this governor we have a true partner uh, working with local government on this important work. Um, and with that, please join me in welcoming Governor uh, Healy. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. And thank you to Steve, um, wonderful town manager here in Danvers for those words and for recounting what is so important about what this community has done. And on behalf of myself, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, we are grateful. I also want to thank Steve Sacco, Tom Boudreau, and the New England Homes for the Deaf for hosting us today. Thank you for showing us how important it is and how it's possible to build homes for a wide range of communities especially those who faced for too long unfair barriers to housing. This is a place of great history too, and I know we'll hear more about that history, but it was wonderful to be able to walk in and see the photographs. Years ago, the deaf clubs, you think about Helen Keller, you think about what's happening right now in this community, and it's, it's really awesome. It's really awesome. So thank you for the pleasure of being able to be with all of you today. Um, we can't do this work without the work of our colleagues in the legislature who are uh, called to actual duty this afternoon at the State House, but we're grateful to the outstanding legislative leadership of Senator Joan Lovely 
and Representative Sally Cairns. Also wonderful to see our governor's counselor, Eileen Duff, is with us this afternoon as it is not a Wednesday when you're otherwise looking at judges, but you can be here, so thank you. Um, I'm joined here today by our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. This is the first time we've had a Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, and Ed Augustus and his team have done a fantastic job. Many who are in the audience here today, we appreciate that. We also have Crystal Cornegay as well from Mass Housing, a great partner in these efforts and affordable housing experts from Wind Companies, which is a Massachusetts company that is one of the premier developers of affordable housing here in Massachusetts. We also have, where is Commissioner Opie? There he is, thank you. Dr. Dr. Opie Alua uh, Satanwa is our Massachusetts Commissioner for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, and we appreciate the work of uh, that commission and that team. We also have our Commissioner Commissioner for the Blind, John Oliveira, with us today. Thank you. So what I want to do is, first off, congratulate you, because this was a competitive process. There's only so much money to go around. And this uh, was one of the awardees, this New England Homes for the Deaf, working with Wind Development to make possible to create here affordable homes for members of our community. This funding, together with the support from the town of Danvers, and we thank Danvers, is going to allow them to move forward with a project that creates 116 homes, more than 80% of which are affordable to folks with lower incomes. That's awesome. Now, all of them will meet passive home standards that help us advance our climate goals as well, and importantly, create a healthier environment for residents and communities. Today's awards fund developments like this one. The good news is, for those not lucky enough to live in Danvers, we're also doing this for communities around the state. So we've got a total of $227 million that today will be invested and combined with state capital, state tax credits, and federal tax credits to build out nearly 2,000 more units, including over 1,700 that are affordable to people making less than 60% of median income, and another nearly 500 that are, affordable, that are available to people making less than 30% of the median. We know that homes are fundamental, housing homes. It's more than a roof over one's head. It's a place of belonging, it's a place of security, and I don't want as governor anyone in our state to live with a fear or the existence of housing insecurity. We know that, it's not, it's not right. It's not right for families, it's not right for residents. So we are really pleased to be here today. Housing is priority one for this administration. It's why we filed a really big $4 billion bond bill that we're grateful the legislature is working, working on it as we, as we speak. But this is really important. And it's also important that we enforce laws like the MBTA Communities Act, which was passed before my time, uh, unanimously almost, and signed into law by then Governor Baker. It's about making sure that every community does its job because as great as our state is, no one single city or town, and we've got 351 of them, no one single city or town acting alone can solve our housing challenge. Everybody's got to give a little. It's not one size fits all. But the MBTA Communities Act provides a lot of carrots, a lot of technical assistance to do the rezoning, which is important. And with the bond bill, we're going to be providing the resources, the capital, the actual dough <laughs> to get things online and produced. So let's make Massachusetts the hub of affordable housing for all. And with that, I'll turn it over to our great secretary, Secretary Ed Augustus, to share more about this announcement. Thank you, Governor Healy. It's, it's very cool to be here. 
uh, as the first housing secretary in more than 30 years. But it's even more cool uh, to be housing secretary for a housing governor, uh, someone who's made this the top priority and shows that in literally every action that she takes. A week ago, we were announcing the new capital improvement plans for Massachusetts. Uh, and over the first two years of this administration, the first two plans, the governor has increased capital investment in housing by 50% in two years. That's real commitment. And the, <laughs> and the announcements that we're making today with the winter rental round, uh, which is our largest ever, is partly a result of the governor signing into law last summer an increase in the low-income housing tax credits from $40 million a year to $60 million a year. So from that signature to today, nearly 2,000 more units of affordable housing are produced uh, to meet the very strong demand all across Massachusetts. So that's uh, how lucky we are to have a governor who gets it, who is using every lever available to her uh, to make sure we're addressing the needs of the people of the Commonwealth during this housing crisis. Uh, we need housing for all incomes. We need housing for all stages of life. And we need a variety of homes for our students, for our families, and for our residents living with disabilities. Everywhere I visit, I hear that the cost of housing is too high and the availability of housing is too low. And this is a serious economic threat to our state. It makes it more difficult to retrain uh, our talented work, retain our talented workforce, including our college graduates, who see their paychecks could go further somewhere else. It impacts our teachers, first responders, our public workers, who are sometimes spending up to 50% of their incomes or more on rent. And it hurts young families looking to buy their first home. No, mat no matter how much they save, they find themselves priced out of the system. Every winter, the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities awards rental projects across Massachusetts. We are proud to be providing funds to 27 different projects uh, that will create nearly 2,000 units of affordable housing. 92% of those units will be affordable for middle-income households. 480 units will be uh, reserved for extremely low-income uh, individuals and families. This round of funding will be spread across 18 different communities from Danvers to Springfield. We are excited to make this announcement at Waterhouse uh, Project here in Danvers. The Waterhouse Project will create, as the governor mentioned, 116 units of housing for residents who are deaf, deaf blind, or near deaf. 93 of those units will be affordable, which includes 17 deeply affordable units. We need projects like this one to make our communities more vibrant, accessible, and equitable. And to make sure that these homes, that there are homes for every income bracket. The Healy Driscoll administration has committed tax credits and subsidy funds to ensure these projects succeed. Because no matter your income or your age, you should be able to find affordable housing in your community. And whether it's rehabbing units to make critical resiliency upgrades in East Hampton or Somerville, or creating 100% affordable housing for seniors in Worcester, or 100% affordable housing for families in Greenfield. Today we celebrate uh, more projects, one more project in front of us. Uh, today we are celebrating 18 communities that are creating the housing that Massachusetts needs. These projects get us one step closer to becoming a more equitable and affordable Massachusetts for every income. So everyone from a barista to a banker can afford to live in Massachusetts. And before I introduce uh, the next speaker, I do want to uh, recognize Kate Racer, who is our Undersecretary for Housing <laughs> Production. I guess you all know Kate Racer. <laughs> Everybody knows Kate. Um, it's my honor to introduce and thank for hosting us today, Adam Stein, Executive Vice President for Wing Companies. Good afternoon, everyone. Adam Stein, I'm the Executive Vice President with Wynn, and it's my pleasure uh, today to talk about this truly unique community developed in partnership with New England Homes of the Deaf. 
Thanks to the funding awards announced today, we'll create the Waterhouse, 116 units of seniors housing, with 100% goal preference for deaf, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing. A community with amazing views of the Danvers River, one that is energy efficient, and that provides enhanced accessibility and supportive services. We learned so much working with New England Homes board and staff and residents during this project. The Waterhouse is designed to accommodate the, ne the needs of this unique population by incorporating specific technology and deaf space design standards. That means open view corridors, extra wide and rounded hallways, flexible furniture layouts, soft colors and natural lighting to al allow residents to focus on communication through sign language, body language and facial expressions. Most importantly, we've created an inclusive, comfortable and safe environment to foster socialization, well-being in the most successful living environment possible. It's been an amazing and a fulfilling process and I'm so proud to be participating in a project in an industry in a state like Massachusetts that does so much good for the communities that they invest in. The Waterhouse is really a first of its kind project and accomplishes three key objectives. It fulfills New England Homes' 100-year mission to serve and expand much-needed housing for the deaf community. It advances Wind Company's unwavering commitment and mission to create and care for mixed-income housing and its residents. And for the Commonwealth, it ensures that the state extend expanded housing production benefits all its residents who desperately need quality, affordable housing. There won't be a duck tour today or a parade for the 26 winners, but there really should be, because these awards are a big win for affordable housing in Massachusetts. In a state that is rightly proud of its champions in sports, we're so fortunate to have champions of affordable housing. Governor Healy, Secretary Augustus, my Hall of Fame coaches, Larry Curtis, Gilbert Wynn, by unanimous decision, MVP Mike O'Brien, when it comes to housing, everyone in this room is a champion and we're all playing hard uh, to win big every day. We'll, we'll do a big uh, groundbreaking event. There's so many people I want to thank and acknowledge. Just quickly, David Ankley, just raise your hand quick. David, David was the deal maker here. David and I met in Peabody years ago. Um, we, we had a, a project that we worked on together. We built a relationship. We built trust. David is on the board of New England Home. David has done a lot of pro bono work for New England Home. And David made the connection from one wonderful mission-driven agency to another, and the rest is history. Um, so thanks, David, for, for bringing us together. <laughs> and of course, what will we do without Kate and Crystal and, and others at the state? So um, it's my pleasure to introduce Steve Sacco. Steve is the the board chair of New England Home. Um, he's our partner, he's our biggest advocate, and i um, very proud to be working with him on this project. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. On behalf of the residents, staff, and board of trustees of New England Homes for the Deaf, I want to thank Governor Healy and Secretary Augustus for this award today. It, it, we're very excited about this project. It really means uh, the world to us. I also want to express our appreciation and our honor for being able to host this event today. There's, and, and for all of you coming in such terrible weather to, uh, to, to join us today. We really do appreciate it. I have served on the NEHD board for 27 years. And in all that time, we have been trying to find an appropriate way to use a six acre lot right behind us here of undeveloped land. And we looked at many things, but didn't find anything that was in keeping with our mission. So we kept saying no to that. It's important to note that NEHD is one of only two long-term care facilities in the United States that services deaf and deaf-blind seniors, two in the entire country. 
So that is a, a significant uh, statistic. We take our mission very seriously, and we, we take this uh, award today very seriously, and it's our responsibility now to make it match our mission, and we promise to do just that. Two years ago, as Adam indicated, we were introduced to wind development by my friend David. And together, over the last two years, we have designed the plan that we uh, presented uh, for this uh, award, and Adam has, has described to you. In WIN, we have found a partner that is not only an industry leader in uh, this type of development and making them come to life, but they have also taken great lengths to honor our mission and to honor our community, the deaf and deafblind community and the Danvers community. Uh, it, by way of example, they sent a team of architects to Gallaudet University to educate themselves on architectural uh, features that need to be in a building for the deaf and deafblind and technological features. So they, they really have absorbed our mission, made it part of this project, and this is the first time we have had a developer propose anything to us even close to that. So uh, I greatly appreciate it, uh, Adam, and your, your entire team. Helen Keller helped NEHD acquire this property and over 100 years ago. I believe, she, and I, by the way, she served on our board. I was not on the board at the time. <laughs> the, um, I am confident that if she were here today, seeing what we have planned, that she would be fully behind this project and, and approve of it. Again, I thank you for helping us en enhance our mission. It means the world to us. Before I introduce our next speaker, I have some housekeeping. Uh, I have been asked to remind everyone, when you leave the parking area, please exit through, it's one way. So when you came in, just keep going in that same direction around the back of the building, and you can exit out there. Follow our police officers and, uh, and parking attendants. Now it is my honor to introduce my good friend and NEHD's Director of Communication and Development, Tom Boudreau. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tom Boudreau. I am thrilled to be here this afternoon with all of you. It's such a wonderful honor to win this award. And I'd just like to share a little bit about myself. I have been involved with New England Homes for the Deaf for 34 years. I have had a variety of roles here. I used to be on the board, and I served as chairman of that board for 12 years. As Steve mentioned, I am now Director of Development, Communications, and Culture, and the list goes on, various hats that I wear. I wanted to share a little bit about the history here. The property that we are all talking about that is going to be developed, as Steve said, ha we have made many attempts over the years. We originally thought we might construct some single-family homes, then we moved on to the idea of a solar field, which would actually generate electricity for this building that we're currently in. After that, we moved to the idea of potentially constructing condos. And that led to our introduction with wind companies and the discussion and project that we are discussing today. We will be working to provide affordable units for the deaf, deafblind, and hearing communities of Danvers. We are thrilled that they will be affordable. On the board here, we have always said that New England Homes for the Deaf is the best kept secret in Danvers. That is not a designation that we would like to maintain. We would like people to know that we are here and know about our amazing reputation. 
We think that this project in conjunction with WIN will help put us back on the map in Danvers. Again, we are serving the deaf, deaf blind, hard of hearing communities as well as hearing seniors who will be living in this unit. I'm very excited about this project. And you know, this project is going to be working about with communication access at the forefront. We will also be offering ASL classes, classes on deaf culture, so that people who move into the building can be friends with each other. There won't be a divide. People will be able to live as one community and with communication with each other. During my career, I have had the opportunity to make many presentations, and I tend to ask people what their idea is of the definition of the word, def of the word disability. I have heard so many different kinds of answers. And I'd like to share with you my definition of what a disability means. It means to me when the individual and their environment do not match. So if you think about that, we've got the water house, this new project, we plan to make the people match with their environment. It doesn't matter if you can hear, it doesn't matter if you cannot. You are part of one community at the Waterhouse Project. So we are thrilled to be a part of this project. We're thrilled to be working with Wynn. I would like to leave you with a quote, if I may. Steve kind of stole my thunder, but I was planning on leaving with a quote, uh, ending with a quote from Helen Keller. And just for those of you who may not know, Helen Keller was instrumental in um, helping NEHD acquire this project, or this property. We would not be here if not for her. So I think this is a lovely way to go ahead and honor her legacy. She played such an, an, such an important role. And a quote that I like that came from her, I mean, obviously she had many, many quotes, but one that I would like to share with you today is she said, when people are busy saying it cannot be done, it actually is being done. And that to me is really the, the definition of what's happening here today. You've heard about other ideas that we've had over the years that did not work out. And this project is going forward. It will come to fruition. And we are so grateful for the support of everyone here today, specifically Governor Healy and your administration. We are really grateful to you and everyone here to, that is making this possible. So I have the honor to reintroduce Governor Healy and I will welcome her back to the podium. Thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, to Tom, to Steve, to Adam, to um, our wonderful town manager. I'm just really grateful. I'm grateful to the town of Danvers, grateful to, to win. Um, grateful to the New England home and grateful to our funders uh, for, uh, for today's uh, announcement. So with that, we're happy to take any questions. Otherwise, we'll maybe move to the back and people can get some water. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there's some. Terrific. Congratulations. This is a really, really important um, announcement. And this is about Massachusetts and, and who we should be always. Yeah. Okay.